Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 18 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. That is a really, really good bluff, especially when it's at night and nobody can actually see like the big dude magma throw the rock against the wall. All they hear is just, just giant like blasts coming from this cannon. I said cannon, which is a crazy over exaggeration. Senku is literally holding what like the barrel of a gun and the gunpowder is just igniting, making a loud sound. The last time that we actually used gunpowder like this in any sort of like guns was way, way back in the day. Like, I think the last gun to actually fire with this technology was a musket. So that's basically the barrel of a gun that Senku was holding. And the way that you would reload a musket is that you would take gunpowder and you would put it like on the top of the barrel and let it fall down the gun. And then you would have like a little stick that would actually push more gunpowder down to the base of the barrel. And then once you had enough down there, you would take a pellet and then drop the pellet down one end of the barrel and it would roll down and then it would be in contact with the gunpowder. After that, you would ignite the gunpowder and then and the bullet would launch out of the gun towards wherever you were aiming it. But for you to reload, like you had to shoot the bullet or shoot the pellet and then you would get more gunpowder and then put it in the top of your gun and then put another pellet down there and then shoot again. It was a terribly ineffective way of war. With modern weapon technology in pretty much every gun that we have right now, the gunpowder itself is still used, but now it's in the casing of the actual bullet. And when you when you load a bullet into the chamber of a gun, like let's use like a handgun for example. When you load the bullet into a handgun, there's a primer that's on the flat end of the bullet, and when you pull the trigger, the firing pin will hit the primer, and that will activate the gunpowder that's inside the bullet casing. And then from there, your bullet will launch out of the barrel and then the bullet will travel and then the actual casing itself will it'll, it'll automatically like leave the chamber of your gun and then it'll reload the next bullet from your magazine to be fired and this all happens in one fluid motion like the person firing the gun doesn't have to take the time and energy to like reload it every time i mean now we're so far advanced in like weapons technology for guns that we have automatic rifles you can just hold down the trigger and the bullets will just keep firing <laughs> That's pretty cool actually. I I thought that he was gonna like quickly develop some like gun or some cannon that just takes them all out at once, but this is even cooler. The challenge that Senku had was how do you equalize like these really huge like gorillas or just like crazy six packs and like giant physically strong bodies with really skinny people from a village and the answer to that is weapons technology. In this case, he chose to use a katana for the weapon. And while that's not nearly as effective as a gun, because with a katana, you still have to get pretty close to the person you're fighting to actually use your sword, it's infinitely better than nothing. Senku is 100% accurate with the temperature ranking here. 1200 degrees Fahrenheit will be represented by weak purple flames. Uh, I said weak purple flames, but like to, to specify, like 1200 degrees Fahrenheit is still pretty high and that was really, really hot. But when it comes to the range that purple fire can actually produce as a level of temperature, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit is on the low end for purple. Repeatedly striking the metal against like an anvil, or in this case just like a, a wooden stump that they found, that's gonna reduce the impurities in the metal itself and that will, by extension, make it stronger. The whole repeated motion of like hitting it with hammers and then reheating it and then hitting it again and reheating it, like what you're pretty much doing is you're removing any air bubbles within the metal and you're removing any um, like any sort of like grainy particles that are in there so that you're left with just a clean metal sheet. 
And the reason that you have to repeat this over, it's, it's very similar to the process of distilling a chemical as a, as a liquid. You need to continuously distill it and the more you repeat the distilling process, the more pure and pure then your, uh, your final product becomes. It's the same thing with a solid. This repeated like bashing and reheating and then hitting with a like um, hammer again to remove impurities is just distilling. <laughs> is floriography real? Like is that, what was I called? Let me write it really quick. Floriography, yeah, that's like, do people actually, wait, do, do florists study flowers? Well, I, I don't know why I just made that realization, but how much is there really to know about flowers? Like, it, like if you're just a customer walking into a, like, florist, like, shop, wouldn't you just say, like, give me the roses or, like, give me the most, like, colored, like, bush? I don't know, like, is there really a lot to learn about flowers? Well, that's it for this episode. Like, I wish there was more for me to talk about, but there's still more of season one yet to come. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more Dr. Stone, go ahead and comment it down below and give me a thumbs up if you think I deserved it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.